Welcome to this week. We lead our show this week with the arrival of 22 senior commanders of the SPLA in opposition who arrived in Juba just before the long Easter break on Thursday the 24th of March. Henry Lokuri has the following update. The commanders aboard a UN flight from Pagak to Juba through Malakal arrived in the capital shortly after 4 p.m. They were received by the SPLA in opposition, Chief Negotiator Taban Dengai, and the government spokesperson, Michael McQuay. Michael McQuay described the arrival of the commanders as a key step in the implementation of the peace agreement to resolve the conflict in South Sudan. We are pleased and happy to receive today our brothers and sisters, I don't, is there any sister? No. Our brothers, <laughs> our brothers uh, from the SPLMAIO, especially from the police, they joining their brothers and sisters who are in the joint uh, integrated police. We are happy to receive them today. This marks actu actually the beginning of the real implementation of the agreement. And uh, with this implementation, <laughs> With the coming of the police, definitely the joint, the, the joint integrated police will be organized and set up to take over the responsibility of the security of Juba town and the other three towns of South Sudan. Tabandengai, SPLA in the opposition chief negotiator, said that the first batch of the opposition forces are expected in Juba to pave way for peace in South Sudan. The arrival of these officers and the starting of arrival of forces as of tomorrow, next tomorrow, this means the first vice president is coming to Juba any, any time as of now. Also speaking at the airport soon after the arrival, the SPLA opposition spokesperson William Ezekiel said the arrival was a positive move. The arrival is uh, a positive move in the process of implementing the peace agreement we signed with the government. And it is, it is a sign that peace has come to the people of South Sudan. And we are happy and we are happy on the people of South Sudan are now happy. This is a good news. Uh, we thank God and we thank uh, signatories to the agreement. Uh, we thank Troika, we thank IGAD and so on and so forth. A peace agreement signed in August 2015 paved the way for various aspects of the implementation of a peace process. Among them, the arrival of all members of the SPLA in opposition and as a result, the formation of a transitional government of national unity. Mao members from the opposition are expected in South Sudan's capital, Juba, in the next few days. In another story, the Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission met again and said they will soon present a report on the progress of the implementation of the peace agreement. David Lukan was at the event and filed the following report. Speaking at the seventh meeting of the Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, JMEC, the chairperson Festus Mogai said the creation of the transitional government of national unity, which should have begun months ago, was rapidly elapsing. Very soon, I will be reporting to the UN Security Council on progress in implementation of the agreement. I remain concerned that at the ongoing delays and the ceasefire violations that continue and in the deteriorating economic situation. Let us be reminded that formation of a new government will not in itself be a panacea. The term of the transitional government, which should have begun months ago, is rapidly elapsing. Therefore, once more, I urge the parties to be dedicated in every respect to the task of forming the new government and consider what will be the plan of action for the first month in office. Mogai said the international community has been worried that the August 2015 agreement is in danger, saying that the country cannot afford any more delays and call upon both parties to the agreement to speed up the formation of the transitional government of national unity in order to end human suffering in the country. Let me be frank and tell you that the patience of the international community, as is my own, is being tested. While I remain optimistic, as must be all of us, now is the time to prove 
that the commitments that have been repeatedly made by the parties are genuine and sincere. The country cannot afford any more delays. Mogai said that the implementation of the peace agreement would help address the economic and financial crisis the country currently faces. The 7th JMEC meeting discussed concrete actions to be taken by both parties to facilitate humanitarian response progress met by the parties in implementing the transitional security arrangements for Juba, the economic situation as well as ceasefire violations and verifications of the redeployment of government forces from Juba. In our next segment, we have extracted highlights from interviews carried by Radio Miraya. Gabriel Shadar interviewed the USA Special Envoy to Sudan and South Sudan, Ambassador Donald Both, and David Lucan interviewed the United Kingdom Africa Director at the Foreign Office, Neil Wigan. Both spoke on the country's economy and the various areas reflecting the formation of the transitional government of national unity. My visit this time uh, really has two purposes. Uh, one, I wanted to come and uh, see what could be done to try to accelerate the process of uh, uh, forming the transitional government. Uh, this has been a, a slower than expected process and many issues have been raised uh, that uh, my colleague, Ambassador uh, Mali Fee, has worked uh, diligently on, uh, working with government and opposition to try to uh, overcome the obstacles to having the return of the uh, security uh, for Dr. Mashar and then getting him here. Uh, I also saw that this was um, uh, important to come and engage uh, on the economic situation in South Sudan, which has become, uh, as everyone uh, of your listeners knows, much more uh, dire as time passes. Can we say that the U.S. now is ready and willing to, to support South Sudan financially to address the economic crisis? The United States has never stopped supporting the people of South Sudan. But there are limitations as to what we could do in a country that was at conflict at war with itself. So as the transitional government comes into office, as the transitional government offers policies that will show that they are serious about utilizing South Sudan's money for the benefit of South Sudan's people, then the international community, including the United States, uh, will be much more prepared uh, to be uh, in, uh, providing the additional assistance to help with this, this stabilization. What is the message you are leaving here in your visit? Th the message that I'm leaving to South Sudanese is their future lies in them working together as brothers and sisters. Uh, they will face days of adversity ahead, particularly economic adversity, but this can be something that unites them in putting conflict behind and in rebuilding their country on an even firmer foundation than it had at independence. As you mentioned that there is of hope that the, the traditional government of national unity is going to be formed, but uh, there is kind of people are saying that, you know, this kind of peace six months down the line and no progress has been made it's, it's like this kind of peace is sort of collapse do you, do you think this is a correct uh, assessment so was, I've just come from a from an IDP camp uh, and there the, the women in the camp were saying that they keep on hearing tomorrow 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 uh, and there's this sense of frustration that the leaders have not yet been able to deliver peace and progress for the people which allows people like those IDPs to go mm -hmm. back home. But equally, it was clear that they're prepare, preparing for celebration uh, at the moment when the new government is formed. So mm -hmm. there is still an opportunity, but politicians do need to move faster to seize it. Do you think that with the current economic situation in the country, is it possible to implement the peace agreement? I think there is a willingness on the f from the partners of, S of South Sudan to engage with the new government to, uh, uh -huh. to discuss how we can work together. It's clear that this will require 
um, the involvement of all the par partners in the new government, so this is really a collective effort. It's also clear that um, South Sudan will need to demonstrate to donors who have already spent a lot of money here a real commitment to improving the way it manages public finances before we can contribute more of our taxpayers' money. What is your last message to political leaders? To the people of South Sudan, as you met the IDPs who are saying they've been told tomorrow, 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 and tomorrow uh, seems to be more suffering that uh, it's coming their way. So my message to the leaders is to listen to what the people are saying, which is that they want to see an end to this conflict as quickly as possible. They want to see a, a government that represents all the, 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 all the stakeholders, all the communities uh, in South Sudan, uh, and which is committed to tackling the deep-rooted challenges that unfortunately uh, South Sudan now faces. This week, we have a sports story which could not go unnoticed. On Wednesday, South Sudan played Benin as part of a qualifying match in the Africa Cup of Nations. Sebit William brings you the story. Football fans from all walks of life descended at the Juba Football Stadium in support of their teams. There was a lot of excitement, especially from the fans of the home team, before and during the match. The early evening match, which started at 4.30, saw the Benin team kicking off the game. The teams at play were South Sudan's Breisters and Benin Les Creoles, translated into English as the Squirrels. The opening goal was scored by the Benin side during the 16 minute, dampening the spirit of the home fans and possibly the home team too. Another goal in favor of the Squirrels happened in the 75th minute, but the Breisters managed to score a consolidation goal in the 83rd minute. The teams traveled to Benin to play a return game. Our next story is a light-hearted one. They say that laughter is the best medicine. This was put to test this past weekend in central Juba, where hundreds gathered at a festival called Let Us Laugh. Our next story sheds some light on the Let Us Laugh festival. Leading comedians in South Sudan had hundreds of guests in stitches at South Sudan's first ever stand-up comedy festival held in collaboration with the United Nations Mission in South Sudan. Yeah, <laughs> Hold on. Let me tell you, I'm daily dollars. The only South Sudanese stand up comedian. The stand up comedy, Let Us Laugh, was a fast aimed at peace and healing in South Sudan, a country which has witnessed decades of conflict. A good laugh can bring people together towards dialogue, friendship, and peace. In the peace building, it is very important for the cultural events and for the laughter. As, as the, you know, the laughter can connect people. South Sudanese have witnessed numerous forms of trauma over the years due to old and recent conflict. Hence the need for laughter 
as one way to herald peace and healing for the country and its people. Braving the hot African afternoon sun, many who gathered had a chance to appreciate the humor, which reflected on a myriad of political, economic, and social issues affecting South Sudan, as was presented by the homebred stand-up comedians. The comedians also took the chance to poke fun at foreigners living in the country. I also want to talk about uh, English with South Sudan. Yani English, you have to talk about English with South Sudan. English with South Sudan. You have to talk about English with South Sudan. You see my car, huh? my car is a less quotation in this lomeration until tomorrow no coming out alive. It will make me to forget what happened to me, to me, to forget our parents who lost during this war, and to forget who are still suffering in Malakal today. So maybe I will tell them, even on phone, I will say that I, as a, your musician, greater one, I start loving and forgetting. You also, I'm, I'm telling you that you start love. The event, which brought together people from all walks of life, also saw musical performances by musicians and cultural groups, drama appearances, performances by the United Nations Mission in South Sudan, Chinese military contingent, with various groups of students feigning laughter, and this rallied the crowd to laugh some more. Besides all the laughter and fun, there were quiz moments aimed at passing on information about the work of the United Nations Mission in South Sudan. One of the mandates of the United uh, Nations Mission in South Sudan is to uh, investigate human rights violations and protect civilians. Hi. 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 A common thread throughout the numerous musical, theatrical and comic performances was the social messaging on the importance of peace, dialogue and togetherness. The resulting mix of the light-hearted and the serious went down well with the audience. I've just come here to witness the Love Festival, which is taking place in the main car. That is the main reason for bringing me here, because it's a kind of... You know, to bring unity among the South Sudanese. So it's a very nice program that has been launched today. So I'm happy to, in fact, to come and witness what is going on. Over the next few months, South Sudan's stand-up comedians hope to continue bringing out the humor in any good or difficult situation as a way of sowing peace across the country and in the process helping it heal. After all, laughter is indeed the best medicine. Be sure to catch up with the stand-up comedians over the next few weeks and months as they look forward to tickling your funny bones. We now end our show with voices from South Sudan's bright stars, where they tell us what football means for them. We hope you will join us again next week. Goodbye for now. Football to me is something very, very important. And I know it's very, very important to the world because it's something that brings people together. Even if there's problem between people, but through football, they bring peace. I'm breathing football. I'm eating football just part of me. Here Hayati, you hear Mabda Sasi, you hear and Tumahi Kula and Kurtagadan Dian Tani Lahat Katirafi to Usreti Finasiana Zatiani. Kurtagadan Bitani Kulishian, Lalu Anna Tribet Bin Magunta, Bella Kuragadam, Rani Vigatli, she Adi and Yerifi Demian. Like Kuragadam Biani, Bianilian Hayat Katira, Awal Haja, Biam Salam Filbalat, 
ثانيا بيكون في ترابط بين الشعوب كرة القدم طبعا هو كل شيء في حياتي مستقبلي هوايتي عملي يعني كرة القدم دي بتجمع شعوب بس لو الحاجات الثانية ما بتقدر تحلها لكن كرة القدم بيقدر يحلها يعني كرة القدم اصلا دي حاجات بتمنى على الفرحة الناس تكونوا فرحانين والناس بتستمتع بكرة القدم يعني كرة القدم دي بتجمع شعوب نوب السودان يتوحد يكون في سلام من غير وروبات من غير مشاكل قبلية مستقيم نقدر نطور بلدنا ونقدم أكثر. After two three years, I wish we can go to a World Cup. إن شاء الله يعني جنوب السودان هيطور لقدام وهيكون في تنمية إن شاء الله وده الحياة اللي نحلم بها لقدام. بتمنى إنه يعيد السلام في جنوب السودان ممكن عن طريق كرة خدم بس السلام ممكن تيجي في جنوب السودان يعني. My dream for South Sudan is to make sure that the country goes well, as we have got peace now, to make a brighter future for me and even for those who will come later in future. Football will grow big in this country, you know, I'm sure of that, and we're hoping for the best. My country, my dreams, are you game? Baladi. Lami, you are ready? My country, my dreams, are you game? My country, my dreams, you are game? My country, my dreams, are you game? My country, my dreams, are you game? My country, my dream, are you game?